Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of a Moto GP 19 career mode here today. Today we are here for round number 13 of the season for the San Marino GP at uh, Misano, one of my favourite tracks on the calendar. But if you guys missed the last race for the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, then do check out the episode guys by clicking on the card in the top right hand corner of your screen. But with that being said, before we jump into any further spoilers, today we are here for Misano. You guys can see on the right hand side of the screen exactly how things look in the championship we are currently p1 213 points to our name but things are very very close and after the last race in britain where things didn't go exactly according to plan we um you know, it, it really made things interesting in the championship. Dovi has once again caught us back up, and the gap is one point going into round 13. Also, Vinales, Marquez, they're still in, it's still in contention. And then there's a little bit of a gap there to Valentino Rossi. So, like I said in the last episode, it's still a four way fight for the championship. So, let's see how it goes. First of all, though, we're going to jump into Friday practice as always here at Mazzano and uh, do the practice programs, get the bike shaken down, and then we're going to jump into some open laps and see if we can try and set a lap good enough to jump straight into Q2 and advance straight to the final part of qualifying. With that being said though, we're going to first of all jump into Friday for practice. So let's do it. Okay then, so here we are currently through FP1, midway through pretty much, and uh, we've already done all of our practice programs and things are looking good. If we look at the test results, we scored maximum points and also based off of things around me, it seems like we are struggling for pace a little bit here, and I'm starting to think we might need to up, put some upgrades in the bike, which I might do in this episode, to be honest, because um, we seem to be struggling for pace a little bit. But with that being said, um, currently, as you'll see in the moment on screen, we're um, you know we're mid, we're mid table at the minute. I think there's a lot more pace to find. Don't get me wrong. I think uh, we're nowhere near a perfect lap, but uh, we're down to P17 in a minute, and I want to try and improve. I reckon you know we're two seconds pretty much behind Vinales. I reckon there's an easy second and a half in in, in a perfect lap, but uh, we're going to hit the track again here and try and set some decent lap times and uh, at least try and get. I'd like to get into the 127s but i'm not sure at the minute we'll have to see how the confidence goes but uh let's hit the track and uh, let's see if we can try and improve and find some more lap time oh that's really hot i'm struggling here i really am i can't lie the last lap I had a mistake you would have probably seen it but uh, i'm struggling to really put it all together here although i will admit i can't see myself finding two seconds to be honest with you not right now anyway right then that's a better lap anyway not ideal but better there we go we improve into the 128 and uh, just inside a second behind Vinales I reckon there's obviously some more time in that due to the mistake we made in the last lap so let's keep going here but I reckon I reckon getting into a 127 is going to be a challenge I really do still a little bit hot there but much better than last time also we had a much better first sector so we're only two and a half tenths down let's try and end this lap strongly if I can Oh, screwed it. Too much speed lost on the exit there. That's going to hurt me a little bit. I was doing so well. At the final corner on the power there, using third to short shift. A lot of people are crashing here today. There we go. We do improve a little bit, but we lost so much time in that final sector. I reckon we can do better than that. That final sector needs work. Oh, damn it. Alright, I'm going to come to the pit lane, get some fresh tyres on and try again, but um, I reckon a low 28 is possible if we hook it all up. Oh, fantastic sector three that was this time we don't have any issues through here final corner bring it home nice and safe a little bit wide there but that will do 
That's better than before. Up to the line. And we do improve. There we go. P2 into the 127s. That's probably it. As about as best as I've got, to be honest. I really had to work for that. And that was a near perfect lap. So, oops. Hopefully that will get us into Q2. Fingers crossed. And, uh... I think I should be alright, that, that lap should be fine for Q2, but uh, I had to rework for it, but we managed to get there in the end. Right then, so we made it into Q2, which is good news, so luckily enough, the practice working out pretty much worked out for us, which is good. So uh, we had to work, but we got it, and uh, we're into Q2, dry, sunny conditions here, so let's get to work, and let's see if we can try and fight for pole. It's going to be a tricky one, but the AI tend to be faster in practice than they do in qualifying, so I reckon if I can get a 27 again, that should be pole position, but we will see how things go. It's time for qualifying. A little bit wide there at the final corner, but it's a pretty good opening lap, to be honest. And it's a 28-4. That's not too shabby, but uh, we're going to have to try and improve on that if we can. That final sector was a little bit rough, that final corner. Could have been better. Sector 1 as well was not great, but a uh, good opening nonetheless. We're going to keep going, though, and see if we can try and improve. Oh, that's wide. Very wide. So Marcus is on a pretty strong lap here. He's going to probably improve. The AI is starting to set their proper lap times. Oh, that's a bit wide again. Hold it. Hold it. Yep, that's going to be us. Very, very wide there. Let's just be careful on the gravel. And let's try and go again if we can. There we go. Dobby down to a 28-0. The benchmark has been set. We're going to try and go for another lap though. Let's see if we can try and improve. Oh, Vinales 27-8. He's showing his practice form once again here at Maverick. We need to try and improve if we can. Let's try and get on it a little bit. Five minutes to go. Oh, almost went down there. That was so close. So, so close. Right, then up to the line. Let's see if we do improve. 28.5. So we don't actually improve it on our own lap. Let's try and keep going here. Oh, no, not again. We're hot. There's a certain line into there which I can't seem to replicate. I'm probably going to bow on this lap now and come into the pit lane, get fresh tyres on and uh, try again. Oh, it's a little bit wide. Oh, no, it's gone. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. That was such a good lap. That was looking good. I'm going to continue on, though. It seems like we've got no damage, so I'm going to try and stick with it here and try and see if I can improve. Right, then, here we go. Onto a time lap. Let's deliver here. Pressure's on. Make it a big one. Oh no, not again. This time we survive. Oh, flags out. Come on, let's push on here. End of the lap. Let's keep going. That was a good, strong third sector. But there's still one more sector to go, which is where I made my mistake last time. Come on, final corner, third gear. Up to the line. A little bit of a wheelie there. Not, it's not going to help me out. Up to the line, and it's a 28 1, I think. It's not going to be pole, but it is an improvement. Where does it put us? Let's find out. And it's going to be P4 for us. We actually miss out by one thousandth of a second on Valentino Rossi there. So uh, really, really close for P3. So we just miss out on the front row. But P4, we managed to salvage it right at the end there. And uh, all in all, not too bad. The final sector wasn't ideal. The final corner wasn't great. And I've been struggling with that all weekend. But there you go. There's your top nine. And uh, Mary Vignal is on pole here. Rossi P3. 
Dovi splits the Yamahas and then we get P4 ahead of Joamir and Danilo Petrucci with Marquez Zarco and Lorenzo making an all orange third row on the grid. With that being said though guys, we're now going to move into the race for round 13 here for the San Marino Grand Prix. But first of all, let's run you through the full grid. We are moving now to the starting grid where the MotoGP riders are ready to start the race. Tension is sky high, but these guys are seasoned pros, able to withstand any kind of pressure. Indeed, pressure is the key word here today. It's going to be a tricky one. We're going to have to really work this race, and uh, the upgrades are going to be very much necess you know, a necessity at the end of the Grand Prix for the next race. But for now, we're going to have to put up with what we've got. It's a dry race. We start on the second row for the first time this season. The question is, can we still win it from the second row? Let's find out. It's going to be a very tricky race. First of all, tyres. We're going to go for... I'm going to be aggressive this race in terms of how much I'm going to push. So I'm going to go for the medium hards and we're going to see how that goes. With that being said, though, it is now time for the race here today for the San Marino Grand Prix. So let's jump into it and let's see how it goes. Riders have taken their places on the starting grid. Riders are deep in concentration with just a few seconds to go until this San Marino Grand Prix begins. Clutch pulled, first gear selected here and it is now time for the San Marino Grand Prix. Lights are on and it's lights out and away we go. Come on, let's try and get a good start here. That's not too shabby. Not my best one, but definitely not my worst. Into turn one, I'm on the outside slash in the middle of the three. We're going to take the inside though for turn two, very aggressive. Inside for turn three, yes, just about. Now up towards turn four, I need to pick up this inside line here. The AI tend to go very, very aggressive into this corner and there's a lot of contact normally. Luckily we pick up the inside and no one has any contact. We need the inside for this corner as well, just to avoid the contact. And there we go, we're away clean, no major incidents. We're P2. Now it's all about turn eight, can we get it all slowed down? Rossi Vinales is very, very hot and we get pushed wide. There's contact there between Vinales and the Ducati, but uh, I was looking good for P2 there, but that's absolutely been thrown away. We go down the inside of Lorenzo though, into the double apex right, which is what I've struggled with all weekend. We do manage to get a double overtake though as a consequence. Dr. P2, Valentino Rossi in his home Grand Prix wanting to impress, but it's a good start from us as we take P3 and it's a positive start. Down the inside of Valentino here. We're going to take that position straight away. Valentino though, straight back down underneath. We're going to just try and follow the doctor here. Hopefully, Dobby doesn't get too much of a gap up front and we can try and follow him. Also, it's important to not get overtaken from behind because if one person overtakes you, everyone's going to get past. So it's important to try and open up a gap here in P3 to the bike behind. Who is behind us? It's Jorge Lorenzo. We haven't seen much of him this season. And now we need to try and set qualifying pace on these harder tyres, at least in this initial phase. And then the race will come to us later on. But I'm going to get my head down here and try and pull away if I can because we need to try and get this gap out. The pressure's really on here at the minute. Everyone's all over the back of me. They're like flyers. I don't have the pace at the minute early on in this race. I'm going to just about hold on to turn one. But everyone behind me is really trying to get past it. You can see the train of uh, bikes on the mini map. I'm trying to set some pace, but I'm really just struggling early on on the harder tyres. I'm going to have the inside over turn four, which is good, which is where you want to be. Let's see if this lap can, I can actually establish some pace and try and get a gap out to the bikes behind if possible. I need to try and find my rhythm. I really do. There we go. That's a good exit. That's going to buy me some time and some space. Ugh, that's very wide through there. I, that final corner has been giving me trouble all weekend. Luckily, it was a good lap overall. And uh, we're going to match Dobby's pace here. Meanwhile, the doctor, Valentino Rossi, I think he fancies his chances here today. He's starting to put the pressure on Dobby. And Valentino has been nowhere near a race win all season long. But today could be his day in his home Grand Prix. So I'd, be, I'd like to see that happen, to be honest. Also, it, it would give Dobby less points to gain the championship. What's up, Vignales? He's starting to put the pressure on hit. I can't shake him off. He's actually starting to catch me up a little bit. He's recovered from his poor start. And uh, the pressure is building as I'm a little bit wide there. Back end goes. I was going to invite Vinales as I'm wide as well on the exit. Side by side with the Yamaha. Can I hold the inside line here? Not quite. 
My shallow line doesn't really work out for me, but I'm going to get a better exit though. That's going to give me the run on the Yamaha hit. Can we get down the inside of Vinales? A bit of contact, it's close, but Vinales commits. I'm going to try and switch back underneath. There we go. Hold on, hold on. Don't let him back through if you can. Oh, I'm hot. Vinales is going to get it slowed down there. Inside for the next corner though for me. Power down. There we go. We hold on just about. I'm not good into this final corner though. It's my weakest corner on the circuit, but we do manage to hold on just about. But the pressure is building from behind. I want to see who the other one is. It's Marquez and Vinales. So two very, very quick riders here putting the pressure on big time. Oh, that was very close. If Vinales attacked me there, I could have gone down quite easily. I'm wide through turn three as well. That's going to put me on the back foot for turn four. Trying to get the inside line if we can. There we go. That's what you want. We're holding on for now. I need Vinales and Marquez to battle preferably. And Marquez has actually got past Vinales to be fair. Marquez is all over me here now. We're going to be in trouble the rest of the race. Get down to the inside if we can. Marquez with a hit from behind. I think Marquez got hit by Vinales as well. And Marcus has gone down. Ooh. Let's try and stay in front of Vinales though if we can. He's very wide there. Wow, that was a push and a half. Right onto the curb. This going to be a flashback to the last lap and a repeat of what happened last time. This time I'm going to wait. I'm going to stay behind for now. I'm going to try and set him up for the next one. Much shallow line this time. He's going to put me on the back foot here. And Vinales does... Get the move done, it seems. Let's stick with him though. Let's not give it up just yet. Well, we've kept up with Vinales for now. But um, he's definitely got quite a bit of pace in hand. And I think if I can finish P4, I'd be happy to be honest with you. Because this is not my track, it really isn't. And uh, the bike needs some work. But let's try and stick with Vinales if we can. We've still got five laps to go here. So if we can stay with him, we might get an opportunity later on. My tyres might come into play. Oh! Never mind, Vinales goes down. I'm a little bit distracted there. I'm offline slightly, but Vinales, the championship contender, that might be a huge blow. Getting a high side over the curb, that is massive for the championship. At the minute, I think we're okay, and I'm able to stay in front of Dramir, who's behind me at the minute. I'm on the limit, but I'm able to stay in front, so uh, P4 is looking good at the minute, as long as I don't make any mistakes. But uh, yeah, Mir can't get too close to me. I'm able to do my qualifying lines and uh, race at my own pace and keep the Suzuki at distance so that's good I'm starting to struggle though the warm tyres are really hurting me here more than other tracks it seems like I, I need my rears quite a bit around here and uh, I'm paying the price a little bit I've got to be careful luckily though I seem to be not the only one that's struggling I think Mir is starting to struggle with his tyres he's uh, dropping off the pace a bit so just need to be careful though the rears are not holding on that's a better lap though 28.4 we're actually catching up to the leaders here and uh, putting some distance between myself and Jaimir. Seems like as my pace now starts to find a, a sweet spot running without any traffic or any distractions, the AI are also struggling now and their tires a little bit. Another strong lap there, 28.4. Two laps to go. Just starting to catch up to the front two here a little bit and uh, put a little bit of late pressure on. If they drop off the pace anymore and I pick up more pace, it could be race on, but um, realistically speaking, it's going to be quite hard to find that amount of uh, time with these worn tyres. Right, last up of the Grand Prix. Looks like we're not going to challenge, but uh, we'll keep a keen eye. Hopefully Valentino, you know, he's getting closer. Hopefully he can challenge Dovi here and make it uh, a really good race for him and also for me as well, make the home fans go wild. Valentino is close, closer than he has been all race, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He's going to try though. Maybe into the final corner. Come on, Valet, have a look. Down the inside of Dovi if he can. No, it's not going to happen. Dovi's going to hold on. He's going to win the San Marino Grand Prix. And we're going to come home, though, P3 on the podium for us. I'll take that. That's a good result. No complaints there whatsoever. And uh, good damage limitation. We are going to lose the lead in the championship. But that's fine by me. We're now going to put some big upgrades on this bike going into the next race to really re-establish our dominance going into the closing stages of the season. But first of all, let's look at the final race results. 
So looking at the final race results, Dovi wins the San Marino Grand Prix. Valentino Rossi actually brings home the first lap of the Grand Prix with a 20 point, sorry, 28.0. And we come home P3 on the podium. And then John Mir P4 ahead of Jack Miller, Alex Rins, Maverick Vinales after that crash P7, Marquez P8 and Lorenzo P9. Johan Zarco rounds off the points in top 10. And then we've got Petrucci, Enone, Crutchlow, Espargro and Bagnar scoring the tail end of the points there in the top 15. And then Quattararo, Oliveira, Sirene, Nakagami, Rabat, Espargo, Morbidelli and Carrie Brown bringing up the rear there for the 23 riders and that is your race results and now in terms of what that means for the Riders Championship Dovi retakes the lead and uh, it's kind of slowly transformed back into a two, two horse race all of a sudden it was looking you know a four way scrap and now in the last few races Vignales and Marcus have dropped off a little bit and uh, myself and Dovi have re-established our gap at the top but um, it's still, I still consider it a four horse race for now but um, Vignales and Marcus need to probably win a race apiece to try and get themselves back into contention in terms of of the constructors we drop back behind Ducati there so Ducati retake the lead as it was a poor race for us and uh, we didn't do our best and in terms of the team championship we remain P4 Suzuki still very close but uh, luckily we're still controlling it in P4 meanwhile Yamaha still lead the way there with Ducati not too far behind with that being said though guys we're now going to move into the main menu and then we're going to put some upgrades onto this KTM machine Okay, so then, we're uh, going to do quite a few upgrades here because things need to improve. Straight away, the one thing we haven't done is uh, a penetration to increase the top speed. So we're going to get that on straight away and uh, really increase that as best as possible. So we'll do two of those because we haven't done them yet. Also, downforce, I feel like it's necessary to keep the, the front end of the bike down. So we're going to do that. The aerodynamics in the bike nowadays is so important. Then in terms of the brakes, we need to do some work on the modularity. So basically, obviously, we can avoid lockups, be a little bit more flexible on the braking. I think my braking is a strong point, so I'm going to try and invest in the brakes quite heavily. We're going to go for aggression as well for stronger uh, braking power and really improve my braking ability. I'm actually going to go one more on both of them. I really want to be able to be a lot better on the brakes because that's kind of my strong point. And then in terms of other areas, I think suspension could do some work in terms of going over curbs because we've had a few incidents this weekend. You saw many people went down in that race. So we're going to go for the hydraulics, get a couple of those on as well to improve curb performance. And then we're going to go one for the elasticity to improve general stability over you know rough surfaces and also change the direction. So we're going to get that on as well. And that's going to be a huge upgrade package on the bike for the next race, guys. But if you guys did enjoy this episode of the Moto GP19 Mod Career Mode, then drop a like on the video, guys. And also get subscribed if you are new for daily Formula 1 and Moto GP content. And check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.